Let me start the video recording. Okay, uh, take, take it from there then. Okay, hello everyone. Hello, Blake and Jada, and welcome to our mediation session. Well, your mediation session. Um, my name is Aaron. I'll be your co-mediator, and my partner is Derek. He will also be a co-mediator. We're here to, you know, help you and work your problems out. Um, the mediation process is quite simple. It's you two basically talk out your problems and your feelings, and then you two can try to come to a solution towards the end. It's okay if you don't come to a solution because you know not always we you both agree, but it's best if you both agree. And um, I guess um, Derek can go over some rules that we have for the mediation process. Hey, Blake. Hey, Jada. Just want to uh, also emphasize that uh, this mediation is confidential and it has to stay between just us as co-mediators and between you and Jada. And some of the rules are uh, they're pretty much cut and dry. Uh, you know, when, when Jada's talking, then Blake, that means you can't talk while she's talking. Or, and Jada, that means that when Blake is talking, that you can't talk while he's talking. And just remember that uh, conf the, you know, rules of confidentiality. And also, we're, everything stays between us, but if there's anything about harm to yourself or harm to others or anything about gang violence or anything of that nature, we can sworn to keep that to ourselves. So just be mindful that that's something that we, uh, we have to share. But besides that, uh, Aaron, if you want to go ahead and just get us going or anything that I forgot. Um, yes, there's a couple, two important rules that we have. Um, don't use any cellular devices because those are a distraction. You want to make sure that no one is interrupting you during this process. And you want to make sure that you are alone. So then, like Derek said, this all stays confidential. And also, you want to make sure that you're not video or audio recording this session because it is virtual, but you know, that will cause a problem. You know, we just we want to keep it for confidentiality reasons. So um, do either of you have any questions? No, I don't. Okay, then, like Derek said, let's get this mediation started. Okay, so we both understand that there was an issue regarding the prom. So who would like to go first? Ladies first. Oh, I don't know. I think Blake has him up today, so he can go ahead and talk first. Okay, Blake, do you feel comfortable going first? Sure, why not? All right, so I had bought a prom ticket, and I was really hoping to go, but apparently I'm not able to, and I just wasted my money, so I would like to be compensated. Hey, Blake, can you repeat that last part for me, buddy? Oh, uh, yeah. Um, I would like to be compensated for my ticket being wasted. Okay. Jada, how can you respond? Well, how do you respond to what he just said? Well, actually, yes, it's true. We were supposed to go together. That's fair. That is very fair. But I didn't completely agree. I think he jumped the gun. I think he jumped the gun on the situation. And, I mean, don't get me wrong, I do feel bad about it. Like, I can understand he feels like he wasted his money. But I don't think I should take full responsibility for this. Okay. So I hear you say that you feel that even though you had sort of made the agreement to go together, you weren't 100% sure or 100% committed and that you think it shouldn't have gotten this far where, you know, the money is involved, you know, you guys are obviously having some issues. So, yes, like, because, I mean, like, he's my friend who was my friend. I just, I didn't give him an official answer. I didn't give him an official answer. Okay. Like, do you think that's how it happened? Is that, do you feel the same way that Jada feels? Well, I don't feel the same way due to the fact that she agreed. And when she agreed, if she had doubts, she should have brought up her doubts. So that way, no conflict should have been involved over this. Okay, so Blake, I have a question. How much was the ticket that you uh, had um, purchased? It was around 180. Okay. And so Jada, are you aware of, you know, you know, 
how do I, you know, explain this? Um, are you, are you willing to, you know, pay him back if it came to that? Um, not really. I mean, one eighty is one eighty. That's a lot of money. I'd rather just pay ninety to compensate for his trouble. But like I said, you know, that's just taking up my end, my cost of the ticket. I, I, I truly feel like this is not fully my fault. Like, I feel bad about it, so I don't have an issue with paying time. I don't have an issue at all, but paying the whole thing, I don't think I can do. Okay. Derek, do you have any words on the situation? Uh, thanks, Aaron. Actually, I do. Hey, uh, Blake, this question is to you. How long uh, has it been since you bought the ticket? It's been about two weeks. So it's been about two weeks, you say? Yes, sir. All right, and Jada, this question is to you. When you know, you know, two weeks ago when he bought the ticket, why is it that uh, you didn't tell him, hey, uh, I see that you bought the ticket, but early on, this isn't going to work out? Or after he bought the ticket, uh, how come you didn't express those concerns to him? Well, because honestly, I didn't know. It kind of came to a surprise. Like, I guess the whole time I didn't think he was completely serious about this whole thing. Like, it, I was completely off guard, but I also didn't really say much and couldn't say much due to the fact that I know refunds aren't given. Okay. So I just kind of avoided it. I will admit to that. I, I did kind of avoid it. But you were aware that he bought the, he bought the ticket two weeks ago? Yes, a, a few days after um, he did buy them. Yes, okay. not that exact day, but a few days after I did. Okay, and how do you think that makes him feel knowing that um, he thought that he got the ticket and got the confirmation with the ticket and to find out later on that, uh, you know, kind of not get clarity from you? How do you think that makes uh, Blake feel? Probably awful. Like, I, I promise I do feel awful. And, and I understand where Blake's coming from. I do. Like, I feel like a terrible friend. I feel like I wasted most of your money. Your money, I feel like I wasted your time. I definitely should have been clear. I mean, I can only imagine what I would do if I was in that situation. And Blake, what do you have to say to Jada about what she just said? Well, I understand how you know how I feel, but do you really do to that? I spent the money I worked for to get the ticket, but also the fact that you ignored it makes it worse because it doesn't really make me feel like you know how I feel about the situation. Uh, there could have been more to it, uh, such as um, telling me how you really felt and um, just clearing out the situation. Aaron? Um, it sounds like both of you guys feel um, kind of the same way. Jay, you, I heard you say that you apologize and that you you do understand how Blake feels that you would feel bad. And, you know, Blake, you're also saying, you know, well, I worked hard for this. And and I think Jada understands that um, when it comes to other than you wanting the money back, what else would you say you need from Jada to resolve the situation, Blake? Um, not too much. Uh, just probably like maybe come to an agreement on what to do. Uh, the time waste could not, you know, come back, but money is is compensatable. So maybe just apology in money. <laughs> Okay, and I have another. I have another question. Was the hundred and eighty dollars was that total for both of you, or was that just for your ticket? That was the total. Okay. And now, Jade, I'm going to ask a similar question to you. Um, regardless of the money matter, what else do you think you would like from Blake in this situation? Jada, are you still with us? Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Okay, I'm sorry about that. Um, I was I was saying that um, as far as needs, I feel like there's nothing else I need or can take from him I, before, for, I guess, my slight deception, which was not my intention. So I guess understanding from where I came from, but also, I, I mean, nothing else I would, quote, quote, need from him. Okay. Derek? Uh, Jada, this question is to you. I think it's important that uh, for all of us to understand, we hear you say that uh, 
that, you know, it was a little bit of uncertainty or that, you know, you was kind of a little reserved about it. What exactly, what was exactly the deal breaker? Why did you want to go, Blake? What, what made you make the decision or make you even be uncertain about it if you guys kind of talked about it initially and he went and confirmed the ticket? What made you change your mind? Um, if we're being completely honest, um, it's not that I had an issue with going with him, but I wanted to go with someone else more. And he asked me first, and I wasn't very fair. And I I did kind of say, yeah, I would like to. And then he bought the ticket. And then shortly after, the person I wanted to go with ended up asking me to go. And then I found out he bought the ticket, and everything got blown into a bigger situation. And his money was slightly wasted. And then his feelings are hurt, and I feel bad. And now we're here in a mediation to try to fix the friendship. Okay. Well, Blake, how do you feel about uh, what Jada just said about fixing the friendship? Well, friendship should always be fixed, but the situation could have been avoided by her telling me no, um, that she wanted to go with someone else. So that could have been completely avoided. Uh, honesty is the best thing in most cases. And, uh, Honestly, I wish you would be honest. Okay, so Blake, I hear that you say communication would have just been great. And Jade, I hear you say that, you know, that you're sorry that you know, that it that it got to the point that it did. Well, let me ask you this, Jada. If you can do this over again, what would you do differently? Actually, I was just trying to think of something as well. And I was wondering, I was wondering if there was, if he had a desire, I could just go with him. Because the person who asked me hasn't bought the tickets yet. So there would, you know, so if, if that's something he still wanted to do, I would be up for it and apologize and try to compensate that way as well. So his money wasn't wasted and we can do what we had planned originally. Well, Blake? Um, yeah, definitely. But only if you truly wanted to. No, I do. I do. Like, I'm, the more I'm thinking about it, the more I feel like I neglected you. And it's not just because of my feelings. You're pretty awesome. You're a great friend. And why not? Like, we're in high school. I just want to have fun. I don't want the drama. So, yes, I do really want to. Erin? Um, I just think that, Jada, what you did was so great and so big and mature of you to, you know, say, you know, I'm going to take responsibility and I'm going to say, you know what, hey, let's just forget this other guy. Let's just do what we plan to do. Let's, you know, say what we were going to do. And I think that was really, really great that you did that. And, Blake, I think it's Thank great you. of you also to, you know, open yourself up and you know forgive jada and say yes i'm willing to go with you again and you know you even said you know only if she wants to that means you're accommodating her feelings as long as well as your own so i commend both of you guys on that it was Absolutely. very mature Absolutely. um i think that this approach is probably for the best um because usually in these situations it's hard to come up with um a solution for you too um, without it being too, you know, serious. Um, so if going to the prom with each other is what you really want to do, I think that would be a great solution that you guys could come up with. I agree completely. I agree as well. Okay. Okay, so when it comes to the agreement, we have a form that we fill out, so whenever um, you consent it to mediation, you consent to doing the agreement. Now I can show you the agreement form and have you both agree on the terms. So we have Jada and we have Blake. And you both, um, what grade are you in? I'm graduated. So am I, I'm a senior. Okay. So um, we have this question on here for statistic reasons, but would either of you mind having your ethnicity um, on, on this agreement form? Ooh, that gets a little complicated on my side, so I'd rather not. Okay, that's fine, Jada. Blake? I'm Caucasian. Okay, so you both have similar solutions. 
So Jada, what would say, what would you say the solution would be best for you? I would say to not get stood up at prom and for him to be my date. <laughs> Just show up on time. That's all I need from him. You say show up uh, on time? Yeah, to be my date. And Blake, what would you say your solution would be? Uh, same. Uh, because they're they're both similar, so the same thing. Okay. Um, is there anything specific that you want? So maybe, you know, you would say, hey, I want to wear this color for prom. I want you to pick me up at this time. What specifics would you like? Um, Jada, you can go first. I just, I just don't want any hostility, you know? Like, if it's going to be done, I want it to be done with. I just want to have a good time for my senior prom. So not too specific. Like I said, just stick with the plan that we had set, and we can discuss that in private later if you want. Okay. Um, Blake? Um, I would also like no conflict and just to have a good time as well. Okay. So, um, do you, the, we all know that you guys are going to be going to prom together, so that will probably be the day. And um, but at the end of this um, this mediation agreement, we like to talk about you know what happens after the mediation is completed. So if anyone comes up to you and says, "Hey," I heard you had a mediation. How did it go? I want to know everything that happened. You have to remember the um, confidentiality agreement and, you know, make sure that you tell other people, you know, hey, we solved it in the mediation and that everything is, you know, worked out. And that's, you know, all you need to know. So, um, Blake, do you agree to do this? I agree. I mean, I don't know anybody who I can really tell, so... And Jada, do you agree as well? I agree, and I would like a copy of that in my email, please. Oh, don't worry about that. We always send an email copy of the agreement so you both have your own terms and you both know exactly what um, you're both supposed to do. Okay, so um, again, with the confidentiality, we understand that everything is confidential and that nothing will be discussed with our peers. Um, so you both agreed to do that? Yes. Yeah. Okay, so usually this um, this doesn't happen very often, but it has occurred in the past. Um, sometimes, you know, you may run into trouble again, and, you know, Jada, you know, hypothetically, what if you changed your mind, or Blake, you changed your mind and said you didn't want to go anymore. You both can come back to mediation, and we can you know, work on a different solution to solve your problems. So just know that that is an open option and that you are welcome to come back anytime. Awesome. So, is that good for you, Blake? Cool beans. Okay. So Thanks, now guys. you both agreed to do all these terms and we will send you each a copy of these of this um, mediation agreement. So we thank you for your time and we thank you for being mature enough to come to this mediation session. Absolutely. Thank you, you guys for helping us out. You're welcome. Anything else anyone like would like to say? Not really. Um, thank you. I feel good. Yep. Thanks. And I just want to say uh, briefly, Blake and Jada, we really do appreciate you guys doing this mediation because I'm like, like uh, Aaron just said, it takes a maturity level to do it. And we're glad that we're able to come to just a great solution. And as uh, Aaron said earlier, if anything arises or anything changes, you're more than welcome to uh, come back to mediation again. It will definitely help you guys 
get another solution. So we're just happy that Blake, you consider Jada's feelings and, and Jada, you can fit, consider Blake's feelings at the end of the day. That all worked out. So we just want to thank you guys. All right. No problem. Have fun at the prom, you too. All right. Have a great time. <laughs> You're welcome. I didn't go to prom. <laughs> great job, Aaron, Derek, as usual. And Brenda, can you, can you turn your video on? Yeah. All right, go ahead. Yeah. Would, would you like okay. to? Okay. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I do. I think it's, I mean, as always, you guys do such a great job mediating. Um, I really like the way Derek and Aaron, um, you guys volley back and forth in your intro. So sometimes it's always been just one person spoke and then the other, but you guys actually just, you know, did it three, four times. Like, okay, I did this. And then you, Derek, then Derek says something, Aaron. And so you made sure that you both had an opportunity to really, get what everything that you guys wanted to say. So if someone missed something, you had an opportunity for them to like take it over. So it was really good because sometimes you forget and having that intro like, hey, do you have anything to add before we move on? So I thought that was great. Um, you know, Aaron, I noticed from last week, I watched the video last week and I noticed that you incorporated some feedback. And so I thought it was really good that, um, you talked about, what was it, just the way that you were sort of talking. Okay, I have recovery here, but I can't remember how I did that. Um, if it doesn't, if something doesn't work, I can't, I'm not sure, but you, there was some feedback that you incorporated and I can't read my notes properly. So I guess I'll leave that. But what I really liked is that you guys both kept the disputants focused on what they, the issues were. So that was really good. And so the other thing I have, Derek, I have one thing. I almost was a bit worried when you put on, you said, put Jada in the hot seat and said, well, why didn't you go? And I was a little bit worried about it. <laughs> I was like, oh, no, that could open up a cat of worms. But great recovery when you turned around and, you know, when you asked Blake, like, hey, so how does that feel that Jada still wants to be your friend? And that's really important to her because I think once that did, the whole dispute, turned in this positive direction where they were all willing to mediate so you know it's just really good because it you know it made a question that could have been maybe volatile but really the way when you heard the answer and then changed it and asked about okay now how do you feel about that i think it set a different tone and really i opened the door for jada to say hey now that i think about it maybe, you know, let's go with, you know, I should go with you and, you know, leave the other thing. So that was really good. It was a bit, you know, and then you use the words, I hear, I hear. And so, you know, that whole little mm -hmm. section made it really clear and focused. So great. Um, and the other thing I really noticed what you guys did, you guys did a lot of praise about, hey, I'm, you know, it's mature of you guys to come in. It's really great of you guys to do that. But more importantly, I think you guys both cited very specific examples of their maturity and so and I think that was really good because it wasn't just like hey it's really good that you know it's an adult thing to do but it was sort of like Jada you know you're doing this and you took ownership of this and so that's very mature of you Blake you said this this is really mature of you so I think by citing those examples it not only it gives the impression that one it's not just sort of false praise you know and then the other thing you're also showing is that you're really listening to what they're saying and validating their feelings. So then that praise just has a lot more impact when you do cite those examples of maturity or growth or, you know, that they're doing something. So keep up with those citations. Anytime you can cite an example when you say something is really good. And so questions, and I have a few other things, but you know, how was it having a dispute and on the phone and not seeing them on the video because now you're just going by their voice and you have no idea what they're saying, body language. So as a co-mediator, how do you have a read on what they're saying, how truthful and how does that affect you? You go ahead, Erin. Um, 
I felt that you have to listen a lot closer and you know especially if we're having technical difficulties because you don't know if they're just not talking or you don't know if we you know you really can't hear them so it really may it stresses the importance of the non-interruption rule that we have and it also challenges us as a mediator to listen to what they're saying and you know hear the emotion in their voice instead of you know just seeing it and I, and, I, and I agree with Aaron. I think it just makes us exercise being more of an active listener. I remember it was one point where Jada was having some type of uh, technical problems, whatever. My whole thing with uh, without being able to see her, she could have just been taking, I don't know, she could have been taking a deep breath like, man, this has kind of got intense. But I love the way Aaron said, uh, are you still with us? Versus, you know, versus saying, I can't hear you. Uh, you need to speak up because maybe she was taking a legitimate pause. But I like what she said, are you still with mm -hmm. us? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so, Blake, you can't, I mean, we actually couldn't see you too much because you had it quite low, but did you feel that you were at a disadvantage that the other disputant wasn't on the phone because everybody's looking at you and no one has a view of Jada? So as a disputant, does that affect you at all or make you feel uncomfortable? Not really, because um, you can have a confrontation so many ways now, such as on the phone or on the internet or even in person. So. Uh, it's just all how you deal with it. Um, it's it's not too difficult. Okay. So what did you find in comparison to this one? Because this was, um, we talked about, I guess, last week about having a resolution that Aaron, that I had actually wrote down about what happens if it doesn't work out. And so then I noticed that you put in your, when you did the solutions that, you sort of mentioned that sometimes it doesn't happen, that it does work out so we can come back. So that was really good because, as Giuseppe said, if it fails, then they might turn off the mediation completely. So you sort of mentioned that. So that was really good. Um, you know, what, what do you think would happen? Because you guys, in this way, they both agreed for the money. Um, but and we talked a little bit about her, Jada, not going with the other guy because she sort of mentioned the reason why she decided to go was because the other guy hadn't asked her yet. So Blake, how do you feel about that? We put, you know, was that really, we sort of mentioned it in the wrap up, but do you think that would have been maybe important to clarify a little bit or bring it up that that could be a possible issue? Um, yeah. It definitely could have been a possible issue, but, you know, I didn't want to bring it up in case, you know, in the situation, Blake was emotional about it. He didn't want to hear, you know, how much he wanted to go with this other guy. Maybe it would, you know, upset him or something. And, of course, we want to end the mediation on, the, on a positive note. And she and Jada had already said, you know, I'm sorry. I did want to go with this other guy more. And, and I should have communicated how I felt, how I felt, you know, about him not asking yet, but if it means anything, I won't go with him and I'll go with you because I want to stay true to my word. So that's why I kind of didn't bring it up. And, uh, no, I, I think it's really good. I had a, oh, go on, Derek, sorry. Oh, you go, no, you got Miss Brenda, I go after you. Oh, no, I, you know what, when I wrote it, I wrote the note way in the beginning and then I noticed that you brought it up in the solution so I thought okay well that was really good because I had it as a note like oh what happens if she you know doesn't go but you know like I said you did mention in the solution so it sort of just cut that off so that's what I thought was really good that you did bring that up that that could have been a possibility but you know you guys have both agreed so really good job right there um what else do I have oh a little little thing and this might be something for the form and not so much for you guys but I noticed that um, Aaron that you when you did the disputants ages you put Jada's grade at number two and she was number one disputant so I'm wondering oh. <laughs> would it be more helpful for the form if their names were on it like beside disputant one and there's a place to fill so you're not confused is that something that would help you um, usually I do it right I just I just accidentally did it wrong because, you know, it's whenever you see the person, it's easier to, you know, remember who's who. But I was kind of typing it and I was, you know, nervous about how it was going to go. So I just switched that up, too. And you know, whenever he said that he had already graduated, I'm like, I can't really put that on there. So I accidentally put it in the wrong spot. So. 
Yeah, and you know what? And that's just a very, I think, a very easy, common mistake. And that's why I'm wondering if, you know, we have to speak in one, if there's a space to put their names as you know, like right in the beginning, is that something like even in the boxes, dispute in one, so when someone's reading the form, you're not having to go back and read who's dispute in one, who's dispute in two, and maybe it might be also easier and more clarified on that form if it does have a space each time to put that. It might be redundant, that's something to think about, that's something to discuss with Cindy, who's doing the form. So I just thought I'd put it out there because, you know, it looked like it mm -hmm. came a little bit an issue. I mean, obviously, it's such a common easy mistake to do so it's just here to learn and see what we can do on that so anyways yeah i just like i said i mean you guys are so like amazing about I, you know sometimes i hear these things you guys are working and i'm like how are they going to get it like how are you going to get someone to agree to pay the money yeah <laughs> like, right, how is this right. going to work out and you know somehow you get an agreement out of them and i get nervous watching it and i know it's so just really good job, like controlling the conversation and getting it to where you guys, I mean, you, as co-mediators, you guys really do lead the disputants in the direction that you want it to go. And so, and, you know, I just think you guys handle it really well. And I'll just, that's really all I have to say. If anybody else wants to jump in, Karen. Great. Yes. Can you all hear me? Yes, mm -hmm. yeah. You can. Okay. First, I apologize for this goofy back and forth and in and out, but I'm happy I was able to, to hear you, and it's kind of interesting to just listen. So I know Jada and I may have had a, a unique experience in this, but yeah, thank you, Brenda, for detailed notes. I really appreciate you offering notes individually to each of the uh, mediators. Um, I, I agree. It's so interesting to me, the notes that I take. Uh, Brenda hit the same kinds of things, which I think is quite remarkable. And I think that it shows that you really understand the process well, Brenda. Very impressive um, being new to it all. You still have a very good sense of what the important pieces of it are. Um, yeah, nice work. I Just little pieces. Again, Brenda mentioned, I'm going to start from the back and forward. So it's at the end on the final form, maybe the demographic, like uh, whatever, age, grade, uh, you know, race, whatever, maybe that could just be an intake. We're not talking about that at the end when we're really busy about all about, oh, do you all hear a noise or is that just me? Yeah, we hear no, it. Oh, do you? Okay, well, I'll keep going then. I just wondered if it was me. If we could put that on the intake form. Because in that moment of resolution, it's so very forward focused and it's kind of that healing moment and sort of like, well, who, you know, who, those who are you questions seem kind of, I don't know, this place isn't right, but just something that maybe could come up in the beginning on the intake and we could take those right off our end. Um, I Let me see, look at my notes here. Uh, hot seat, exactly. I think those are... Those are times, they're hard questions. Again, congratulations to you, uh, Derek, for asking those hard questions. And you as well, Aaron, have done it in many situations. We're just kind of like, okay, this is, this, this is where there's a lot of feeling invested. Mm -hmm. And you, as we all know in mediation, the feelings are the key piece because actually the details are kind of minor. The similar things can happen to people. Somebody cuts me in line. I'm totally cool with that. Somebody cuts me in line. I'm upset. Right, we both have a moment that we, we, we are we have the right to feel the way we feel and that's when you need to talk about that feeling. So the feelings are every bit as important as the detail of what's happened. So I applaud you for going to the feelings because when you when those mediators uh, ask that in a safe place and the disputants disclose those feelings in a safe place, you get to a solution. I was like, Brenda, was like, oh, crud, how are we going to get, no, you're going to pay back. Ah, oh, it's a lot of money. No, what's going to happen? Mm -hmm. And we didn't have to get there because you went to, the money wasn't the most important thing, which what sounded like the most important thing, mm -hmm. and it wasn't when you got to the end and had people disclose their feelings. So, so that was, yeah, that's, so that's the most important thing is to get to those feelings and congratulations on getting there, even when they were hard feelings to discuss. 
Um, and I don't want to go too long. I said a couple more things. Um, good job asking both disputants, how do you feel? How do you feel? I think at the beginning there was um, um, just asking one disputant, well, how, do you, how does that make you feel what the other chap said? Uh, you know, how, how does that make you feel, Blake, when Jada said this or, or the other way around? It doesn't matter. If you ask each disputant, so this is what I heard you say. This is what I heard you say. And now, now that you've heard it a second time, how does that make you feel? And each dispute and having an opportunity to reflect on what they heard the other person said. And, and again, it, again, it happened, and it was just a matter of me waiting it out to hear it happen in a more organic conversation. Um, and then I have my final comment. Uh, beautiful job again. Forward focus. Way to go. Um, I, I think that that's so important, and you communicated that. Way to go. You're doing this. It's confidential. We know we're working on what's going to make things better in the future. So, so good job on that. Oh, shoot. I found another comment. Sorry. <laughs> 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 Sorry. Okay, I promise. This will be the last one. Um, when we start, uh, and this maybe, again, is my little kid bias, we don't uh, say who's the lead and who's the assist, and I don't think that we even came out until, the, you know, the disputants were actually formally introduced. Could, do we do we can we just say co-mediators and then there's like no lead that you're both leader you know you're both lead <laughs> I don't know how do you all feel about that maybe that's a well, minor I thought that was that came up in our training as 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 part of our training model so we certainly can um, shift the language that so that's no problem with us yeah I don't know that that matters like I said you gotta you gotta check me on my little kid bias because that's what I'm always coming with so mm -hmm. it may be that is significant in adult mediation Giuseppe is that that's a is that a norm because if it is we would want to create that for our high school kids I think did I lose Giuseppe no 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 I'm here yeah, yeah. We, 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 yeah. We, we can change anything any way we want no no problem Okay. But but do adults typically say the lead mediator is, you know, Aaron and the co-mediator is Derek, no. or is that? No, no. Usually, the the co-mediators before the mediation begins, they figure out who is going to be the lead. But okay, because well, I think they did that. I just thought mm -hmm. in our little kid world, we just say you're both mediating. We don't yeah, you, and yeah, you, you don't use the term lead in front of the disputants you know you're just saying my co-mediator and, and so yeah, yeah, yeah so. okay okay so see, see if it but if it's preparing them for a more advanced adult experience if it if co-mediator or, or pardon me lead mediator is part of that lexicon keep it in there i don't want to mess up with their <laughs> what's later no. right right okay yep. Cindy. okay that's good for me Cindy, is there something else you'd like to say about this case, or we have covered it all? No, I think we've covered it. I think there's some things that we can we can make better, the form. Um, I appreciate the feedback. Brenda, thank you so much, and Karen, of always. Um, and also with the, um, the terminology with the lead and co, maybe we can describe the mediator's task and responsibilities instead of giving them term, terms like lead or Co is though co is I don't know less important okay. you know because <laughs> we certainly yeah. don't want them to feel that way so um you know yeah so w it, like Giuseppe said we can do whatever we want to do so sure, exactly <laughs> yeah exactly so but great job guys as always thank you All thank right. you actually yeah. I, I, oh. I was going to say I found this case hard because I didn't want to bring money matters into it because ah, right, yeah, right. having each other at that yeah. age pay that kind of money, that's just yes. kind of so many more problems. So I'm so happy that Jada suggested that she just go with him instead because I know we can't tell them what to do. We had to let them decide because right. I was short of thinking. I was <laughs> not sure what we were going to do at all. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, and that's what I was saying about when I thought in my head, watching it was mm -hmm. like, how can you tell someone they have to pay him back? <laughs> right, and so that's right. why I really appreciated when Derek sort of said, when he sort of said that question, I was like, uh oh, but you know what? And then as Karen pointed out, that changed the direction that it focused on the feeling and it wasn't about money. It became something else. So sometimes having those questions and being prepared and just dealing with it just really well, like, and focusing on whatever she's saying on those feelings 
made all the difference and didn't make it about money because in my head too, Erin, I was like, how are you going to get her degree to pay this? So, you know, it's just, like I said, it was just a, for me, it was a really key moment. And then I think it worked because you did use those words. I hear you saying this. I hear you saying that, um, you know, it really validated the emotions as Karen said. So just really, like I said, that was so key on something so difficult to really yes. navigate. So just yeah. good job for that. Again. <laughs> I know. I know. Glad it wasn't me meeting that one. You guys get much better. <laughs> now, uh, so, so a final comment, a couple of final comments. Today was the last simulation of our serial simulation. So we, we run these uh, simulations, okay? And I hope it was uh, enjoyable and, uh, and interesting. And with uh, Cindy and Karen, we mm -hmm. discussed the uh, possibility of having a kind of lessons learned video conference with all students who participate in the simulation. And so uh, uh, Cindy can ask you one question about your experience. You know, what, how did you expect the simulations to be? Whether uh, you were satisfied, whether you found them useful, what you liked about them, what you didn't like about them, how we can make it even better. A, a kind of uh, informal chat, okay? And, and Cindy will be the facilitator of uh, uh, this uh, discussion, and she will also send you in advance the, the questions that she would like to ask you. So, Erin uh, and Derek, what, what do you think about this uh, wrapping up uh, lessons learned the chat um i think it's a good idea it definitely get allows everyone to come back together you know talk about their experiences and how it benefited them and also mm -hmm. allow us to you know brainstorm about what we could change and uh, what we can yeah. improve on so yeah i think it's a good idea okay. well, what, oh, what, I agree. what do you think and I and I agree as well. I think you saying come back together again, as in just have a discussion over everything, right? Was that the question? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So, oh so, yeah. So, so there will be no simulation, just an open discussion, right? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. yeah, I think I think that's going to be really good and productive. I think. Oh yeah. Absolutely. Definitely. Right. Because uh, because as I said, this was the last of six simulations, and this is one component of our project. The other components are. Uh, providing uh, peer mediation training online so that uh, students interested in uh, peer mediation can learn about peer mediation uh, wherever they are. Okay. 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 So, uh, Cindy, yes. you, you can arrange that and, and then we yes. have a video conference. All right. Okay. That sounds great. A a any That's final awesome. questions, anybody? I have one thing to say. I think uh, one thing about the online world, man, I really, really love how there's so much of us on here and we're all, because all of us, you know, it's confidential at, in person. So all of us can't sit in a mediation together because it'd be awkward for the person. I remember like how, how, you know, when we were training, how Dr. Morton would come and sit in a sim simulation and make the people feel a little bit awkward or whatever. I think it's cool that now all of us can, now you guys can see, you know, the actual, what's going on inside of the conference room versus actually being there and affecting the dispute and feelings. I think that's awesome. And I love the role of like Brenda and I believe her name is Alexandria. I love, that's probably my favorite part of the entire mediation, you know, solutions of course, oh. but especially when they start right telling us, okay, this is what worked and this is what didn't work. That's my favorite part. I, I believe that for everything. That's perfect. Uh, I look forward to that part. And uh, when all you guys on adults come in and say, hey, this is how it needs to look and this is what it looks like. I just love it. So I want to put that little two cents in there. All right. I want, to, I want to add that to Derek because I'm a student. And I don't know if you guys know this, Derek, Aaron, that I'm a student. So I just was lucky I was Karen's student and became part of it. So I just always, I always tell Karen, I feel so. <laughs> Brenda, we can't hear you. Oh, I lost her too. Yeah, go ahead. Brenda, we can't hear. Yeah, go ahead. Oh, okay, yeah. Okay, sorry. I was just saying that, you know, I don't know if I had said this, but I'm a student of Karen's, and really this is my first experience mentoring, and I have learned so much from you guys because so I feel that, like, oh, how am I going to mentor these 
students because I'm just not even in a position. So I have just it's just been such a pleasure and honor to see you guys. I as hearing the words you guys use just in the whole sort of counseling session, um, you know, profession that I want to go into. It's just amazing. I you know when you're saying thanking me for feedback. Oh, thank me. Thank you for letting me watch you guys as professionals <laughs> really do your job because I've just learned so much. Like just the way you navigate, your, the yeah. way the words you use. I mean, I yeah. can't tell you guys just how. I don't know if you guys know this. I know we say it every week, but you guys are really amazing mediators. <laughs> it's just such an honor to watch you guys. Oh. Thank you. <laughs> oh, thanks. I appreciate it. Wow. Okay, so uh, right. I wanted to see you soon again to have that uh, mm -hmm. chat, okay, for the lessons learned. And uh, in the next couple hours, we'll send you the video recording of this session. Awesome. Okay. okay. Thank you. Okay, guys, thank you very much. Thank you, everyone. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Bye.